This is Al Brooks and this is my price action trading course. The current module is about measured moves and other types of support and resistance. Support and resistance. Support is a price below the market where buyers might be stronger than sellers and resistance is a price above the market where sellers might be stronger than buyers. So why should we bother finding support and resistance given that most of the time support or resistance will not stop a trend? It's because all reversals take place at support and resistance. So if you know where support and resistance is and you watch the market's behavior when it gets there, you're in a position to take a trade. You'll either look for a breakout or a reversal. So what's the big picture when it comes to trading? Well, two things. Most of the time, traders are buying at support and selling at resistance. And then the other time that they're taking trades is during breakouts, strong trends. So for example, if the market's in a strong trend, it's racing towards some resistance level. Uh, traders will be buying the market in very tiny pullbacks and they'll expect that every minor resistance level along the way will fail. Market, the market might pause at resistance levels as bulls take partial profits, but the market will usually continue up through all resistance levels. Ultimately, when it does reverse, it'll be at a resistance level, but during a breakout phase of a bull trend, traders will be buying for any reason, and I talk about those in the module on trading a strong bull trend, a bull breakout. Similarly, with a bear breakout, traders will sell for any reason. The market is racing downward to a support level. You can't be sure which support level will eventually stop the market. However, you should assume that most support levels will not. The market may pause as bears take partial profits, but the market will usually continue through all the support levels. When it finally does reverse, it'll be at a support level. But during a bear breakout, traders will be shorting for every conceivable reason. Most of the time, the market is not in a breakout, okay? Most of the time, uh, it's either in a weak trend or a trading range. Uh, in either case, traders will be, will, will be looking to buy at support and sell at resistance. So if the market's in a strong bull trend and it pulls back to test a breakout point, they'll buy. If it pulls back and tests a prior higher low, they'll buy. If it pulls back and tests the bottom of the bull channel or a trend line, they'll buy. If it's in a bear trend, let's say a broad bear trend, They'll sell rallies, rallies to the moving average, rallies to the bear trend line, the top of the channel, rallies to test a breakout point above. So if the market had a bear breakout below uh, a bear flag or a trading range, they'll sell if it gets back up there again. If it uh, rallies up and tests a prior lower high, they'll sell there. And most of the time, that's what traders will do. And how do you know this? They tell you, just turn on television, watch on CNBC, watch Fox Business News. When traders are talking about trades that they take, most of the time they're simply buying at support and selling at resistance. If a stock comes out with an earnings report and the stock's in a bull trend and it has a big gap down, uh, you won't hear the traders say, oh, I'm selling that. You'll hear some traders say, oh, I'm selling that, and other traders saying, well, I don't know. It's down near the prior low, I'm gonna buy. And you will virtually never hear them talk about candlestick patterns. Oh, a dark cloud cover. Oh, a harami pattern. A hanging man. Uh, that's not how they're trading. Um, candle patterns are nice, but they're minor in importance. The big picture is support and resistance. And it's just really, really important to understand that and to use it as probably the cornerstone of your trading. You know, you've got to be looking at support and resistance. It's far more important than candle patterns. Um, and a, a signal is made of both context and um, a signal bar. So a setup, excuse me, a setup is made of context and a signal bar. The signal bar is the little candlestick pattern at the end. Uh, the context is what all the bars to the left show, and that includes uh, mostly support and resistance. And it's far more important than the candlestick pattern. So for example, in a strong bull trend, a candlestick pattern is meaningless. You're going to buy for any reason. Even if there's a strong bear reversal bar, um, experienced traders will buy below the strong bear reversal bar, expecting the bar to be just trapping uh, uh, inexperienced bears into shorts. And uh, the uh, short will quickly turn into a uh, bull flag. 
and smart bulls will enter exactly where those bears will have their stops and where they'll exit with losses. So big picture, support and resistance. And then 5% of the time when it's in a breakout mode, you uh, enter for any reason in the direction of the breakout. The advantage of placing trades at support and resistance is that the trader's equation is very strong. The reward can be much bigger than the risk, and the probability is usually between 40 and 50 percent, 40 and 60 percent, and that creates a very strong positive equation, trader's equation. What types of support and resistance are most useful? Trend lines, prior highs and lows, and measured move projections. So for example, if the market's in a bear trend and you draw a trend line across the highs, you look for the market to test the trend line and if you get a strong bear reversal bar, you have a strong setup for a short. Your risk is small, the height of the signal bar, and your reward is large, probably at least twice as much as what you are risking. <coughs> Here are examples of other reversals. Again, a trend channel line, the market broke below it and immediately reversed up. Here's a bull trend, and we have three pushes down. The market fell below the trend channel line and reversed up. So you have a wedge bull flag <coughs> after a very strong breakout. So it's a higher low major trend reversal at a trend channel line. Here we have a double top. You can call it a wedge, you can call it a triangle. And it's at the top of a trading range. The market poked out of the top and then reversed down. And again, a bull channel now at the bottom of a trading range, um, so near a prior low. So you have a large double bottom, and the market poked below the trend channel line and is reversing up. So small risk. You enter one tick above the high of the bar. You stop as one tick below the low of the bar, and your target is somewhere around the top of the trading range, and that's several times bigger than the amount that you're risking. Yet the probability is at least 40 percent. I say that because probability for most trades is 40 to 60 percent and if you're not certain assume that it's 40 percent. If you're very very confident assume that it's 60 percent. Prior highs and lows are support and resistance. So we have a high here. The market went a little bit above it and then reversed down in a strong bear reversal bar creating a double top. A prior low here the market touched it, but broke through. However, when we got down to another low, just a little bit lower, we got a big tail. We tried to push down again and got a tail. We tried to push down again and we got a tail, and this time we have a strong bull reversal bar. So the market is reversing at support, just below this low and just above that low. So that provides a good entry for a trade where the reward is bigger than the risk probability maybe 50-50 in a situation like that. Here's a more complete list of support and resistance, uh, trend lines, prior highs and lows, measured move projections, moving averages on any time frame, and then a bull entry bar low and a bear entry bar high, a bull signal bar high and a bear signal bar low. The high, low, open and close from today, yesterday, uh, on the daily chart, the weekly chart, monthly chart, daily pivot points, I never look at them. Fibonacci retracement levels and projections, I never look at them. And any type of band, Bollinger Band, Keltner Band, I never pay attention to them either. You can make trades off these things even though I don't pay attention to them. But uh, I, th I think the other types of support and resistance are much more reliable and they provide me with enough signals that I don't have to look to less, re less, less, less reliable support and resistance. Here's an example of a strong bull trend and the moving average is support. I use a 20 bar exponential moving average. We have a strong bear bar trying to reverse the trend. Hit, it hit the moving average and we immediately got a bull inside bar. So that is a good high two pullback at the moving average and a strong bull trend. One push down, two pushes down. So you, you can call it an ABC pattern, you can call it a high two buy setup. In any case, it's a strong buy signal and a strong bull trend. 
uh, at a support level. Prior bear signal lows, okay, uh, we have a, a sell signal, a bear signal bar here, we have a bear signal bar here, and a bull trend, and the bull trend keeps going up. Eventually, the market reverses. Um, this is a parabolic buy climax at the top of a uh, spike and channel pattern, spike and channel. And then we have a lower high major trend reversal. Targets on the downside are failed sell signals below. So the market tried to reverse here. The market will probably come back and test it. It did here. It did, did again here. Here's another possible sell signal for a, a higher high um, at the top of a trading range. The market did it trapped bears in and went up. Bears will short here. They'll scale in higher. They'll add on here. They'll add on here. And they'll hold until the market gets back down to their original signal. Once it's in the area of their original signal, they buy back all of their shorts. They take profits on the shorts from here. They take profits on the shorts from here. And they get out at break even here. So the market is drawn down to this price level. And the bears are not going to buy back their shorts until it gets here, and that's what happened here. We got back to the low of the earliest sell signal, and the market found buyers. Bears bought back their shorts uh, to take profits, and you had some aggressive bull scalpers buying for a scalp. <coughs> okay, a bear signal bar low. So, um, we have an IOI top to this uh, spike and channel pattern, possible sell signal. We sold off, and then we got drawn back up to test the original entry price, the low of the signal bar. So that is a magnet. It's a resistance level, and you can see the market created a two-bar reversal here. So it's a short one tick below the bear bar. It's also a wedge bull flag, three pushes up, one, two, three. Or you could use maybe this high, one, two, three. And um, it's a, it's a good-looking um, sell signal for at least a test down to the bottom of the range. <clears throat> and possibly a second leg down and a leg one equals leg two bear trend. Most measured moves that I use are based on spikes. You can use the term breakout, you can use the term trend bars, it doesn't matter. All the same thing. So most measured moves are based upon breakouts and on trading ranges. In other words, strong trends and trading ranges. Measured moves are most useful for, for profit taking. Remember, most support and resistance fails to stop a trend. However, it's a good area for taking profits if you're holding a position in the direction of the trend. Um, if the context is good, you can look for a reversal trade at uh, a, a support or resistance level. Uh, for example, one based upon a measured move. <coughs> Remember, the market's always alternating between a trend phase and a trading range phase. When a measured move is based upon a spike, a breakout, it usually uh, leads to a trading range. When a measured move is based on a trading range, it usually leads to a breakout, a spike. If there's a trading range, look for a measured move up or down after the market breaks out, and you base the measured move projection on the height of the trading range. And you look to take partial or full profits once the measured move reaches the, once the breakout reaches the measured move projection. Here's an example. We have a bear trend. We have a trading range. And the market could break out up or down. Here, it started to break to the downside. If you went short anywhere in here, for example, at the top of this ABC, two legs up, one, two, so it's a large low two short and a bear trend. If you took that short, you're going to be taking profits at some point. One area where you might want to take profits is at a measured move down from the height of the range. So here's the top of the range, the bottom of the range. Here's the measured move projection, and look what happened when the market got there. We had a little reversal, and that tells you that a lot of traders took profits there. It doesn't matter if they shorted up here, if they shorted the failed breakout of this um, <coughs> micro channel, or if they shorted here on this small wedge, bull, uh, wedge bear flag. Three pushes up, one, two, and three. It doesn't matter where they shorted, they'll probably take partial profits 
based upon a measured move uh, created from the trading range. And you can see they took partial profits. They didn't buy everything back. We got a little bounce, and then the bear resumed. If the breakout keeps going after hitting a measured move target, um, then look for a measured move based upon the height of the, uh, of the spike, on the height of the breakout. And then you take more partial or even full profits at um, measured move projections. So here's an example. We have um, the market just kept going. If the trend continues, you take more profits at um, projections based on the height of uh, spikes. So for example, we have a trend down, a leg one, a trading range, and then trend resumption. Um, so traders will look for the market to possibly reverse once it reaches uh, the length of the first leg. So here's the first leg. Here's exactly the same number of ticks. And look what happened when the market got down to the measured move uh, based on a leg one equals a leg two projection. Again, you have a small reversal, so traders obviously took profits here. Partial profits, full profits, different traders do different things. <clears throat> also, you can um, make a measured move based upon the height of this breakout attempt. Right. So here's how high this uh, original bear spike was and you can project down from below its low and it takes you to this price level and again traders will use that as an area where they'll take profits on their shorts here's another example of a leg one equals leg two move there are actually two in this picture so leg one here is a to b the market pulled back to c a lower a higher low major trend reversal and when it reached uh, a, a move up equal to the height of AB, in other words, when CD became the same size as AB, traders took profits, and this is what happened. Now we have a larger, uh, two uh, a larger pattern. We have a leg up from A to D, and when the market sold off to E, and and then the trend resumed up again, traders will look for a measured move equal to the height of A to D. And that's what happened up here. You see profit takers on the leg one equals leg two measured move up. So what ultimately happened was we had a larger leg one, leg two move. The larger leg one is A to D. It's subdivided into two smaller legs. And then the second leg up, E to F, also subdivided into two smaller moves. The middle of a trading range often provides a way to create a uh, measured move projection. Remember, a trading range is an area of agreement. The bulls agree that it's a good place for putting on longs. The bears agree that it's a good place to put on shorts. So it's probably the middle of something. It's probably the middle of the value for both the bulls and the bears. So if it's the middle of something, it can lead to a projection, a measured move projection. Here, the market rallied sharply from 1 to 2, and then it entered a trading range. The trading range might be the middle of the move. So if you look at the middle of the trading range, you can use that to project up to where the move uh, might go, to, um, um, and, um, and traders will then consider the move has gone too far. Okay, so you get um, the low here, the middle of the move, and you project up, up here, and you can see what happened when the market um, got equally high above the middle of the trading range. It started to find sellers. Some of the sellers were profit takers and some of them were shorts. And obviously there were a lot of shorts because the market came back down into the middle of uh, the trading range. Okay, so a trading range is an area of agreement, so it might be the middle of a bigger move. <clears throat> Here the market sold off and then went sideways. So you have to wonder, trading range Traders agree that this is probably uh, a reasonable price, so if it's probably the middle of value. Both the bulls and the bears like this area. Both the bulls are buying and the bears are selling. That's why we're going sideways. So it might end up being the middle of, um, of the entire move. So traders can project down from the top of the move to the middle of the trading range, 
and then find where a measured move down would be and bears will look to take profits in that area. Here on the upside we have a pretty strong move up and then two-sided trading so both the bulls and the bears think of this as value so if it's an area of value it's probably in the middle of um, the developing um, trend and you can project up and traders will use that as an area for taking profits. The height of the spike, in other words, the height of the breakout often leads to a measured move projection. So here we have a very strong bear breakout. You could say the breakout continued all the way down to here or all the way down to here. It doesn't matter. But when you have a two or three or even one, one, two, three, four uh, consecutive very strong uh, trend bars, Traders will look at the open of the first bar to the close of the last bar and project down um, and that's an area where they'll look to take profits and that's what happened when the market reached the measured move projection. The bears took profits, aggressive bulls started to scale into longs for a scalp up. Here's a strong bull spike. Um, you can use the open of this bar to the close of this bar, the open of this bar to the close of that bar, the low of the spike to the top of the spike, the uh, open of the uh, spike to the top of the spike. No one knows in advance what traders will use for measured move projections, and I tend to look at all the possibilities. And measured move projections based on spikes can uh, go either direction, up or down. So here's a bull spike and the market started to reverse so when the market started to form these two bear bars you had to wonder that it might break out below the low of the spike and then go down for a measured move which is what it did there's something interesting about this um, measured move I said use the open of the spike this is also the open of the day and this is a fairly common situation where you have an open of the day and then the market goes up for about half of an average daily range it then reverses through the low of the day and it very often then finds uh, support at exactly a measured move in the opposite direction. So we had the open, it traded up for about half of an average daily range and then it started to reverse. When it's starting to do this, traders expect it to trade down for about the same number of ticks and for the open of the day to end up as the exact middle of the day creating a perfect doji bar on the daily charts. So traders will look to take profits down here and aggressive bulls will even buy uh, looking for the market to come back to the open of the day and possibly form a perfect doji bar on the daily chart. Instead on this particular day we had a double bottom bull flag here for a higher low major trend reversal and a reversal up toward the high of the day. On the daily chart this will be a reversal day. Um, here's the open the mark, and then a tail on the bottom and then a close on the high. So the point again, um, the open of the day sometimes is the middle of the day and traders look for measured moves based upon the first move. <coughs> Here's a strong bear spike so you always look at the open of the spike to the close of the bar and you look for a measured move up or down. Here, here's the measured move up and look what happened. Okay, the market broke above the high of the bar and raced up and went a tick or so above the high of the bar and found sellers. Who's selling? Well, the traders who bought down here will look to take profits at measured move projections and uh, it turns out that today they took profits at a measured move based upon the height of the bear body, the height of the bear spike. And you probably had other traders shorting as well. Here we have a bull spike. Here's the open of the spike. Here's the top of the spike. I could have also used the open of the spike to the close of the final bar of the spike to generate a measured move projection. You can also generate a measured move projection based on the height of the trading range. Here's the bottom of the trading range. Here's the top of the trading range. And here's the measured move projection down. And traders will use measured move projections to take profits. And that's what happened here. So when the market reached the two measured move projections, you had a lot of buying. Most of the buying was probably bulls, excuse me, mostly bears taking profits and the market went sideways a little bit 
and then the bears came back and they reached this point and reversed up um, a lower high major trend reversal bear trend here's the trend line here's the trend line break even though it did not reach the moving average there was a lot of sideways trading with a lot of bull bars so that's enough buying pressure for traders to look for a reversal once the market started to reverse up traders will look for areas to take profits one thing that they'll do is uh, look um, for a measured move based upon the height of this trading range and that's what happened up here uh, bears will uh, might scalp shorts bulls certainly will look for areas to take profits and this is a logical place for them to take profits it's also a test of the um, original breakout point um, in the sell-off back here here's the breakout point and here's the breakout and the market came back to test that area <clears throat> Micro gaps. Every trend bar is, um, and for every trend bar, you always look at the bar before it and the bar after it. And if those two bars do not overlap, you have a micro gap. The trend bar is a micro gap. And it's a sign of pressure. If it's a bull trend bar, it's buying pressure. If it's a bear trend bar, it's selling pressure. And it increases the chances that there'll be follow through um, in the direction of that trend bar. So for example, we have a bear breakout and the bar before it, and you can look at the bar after it or even the bar over here, we have a micro gap. The bulls were unable to push the market back above the breakout point, the low of the bar before the trend bar. That's a sign of selling pressure and it increases the chances that there'll be uh, further uh, downside movement. Okay, we have some highs here and then we have a little breakout bar and the pullback did not fall below the breakout point. So that's a sign of buying pressure, urgency on the part of the bulls. You'd expect higher prices. We have a big bear breakout here. Here's the breakout point, And the market did not come anywhere near the breakout point on its pullback. So a sign of tremendous urgency, um, a lot of selling pressure, and the market probably will go lower. And gap here. Here's the breakout point. Here's the bear breakout. The pullback did not go above the breakout point, so we have... A micro gap in here and it's a sign of strong selling and you expect lower prices here's a a bull breakout the close above the high of the prior bar uh, the next couple of bars tried to come back and test but they could not fall below the breakout point a sign of buying pressure and it increases the chances that the market will go up If the gap fills, the chance of follow through um, is less likely. So for example, here's a bear breakout, here's the breakout point, but this rally went above the high of the breakout point and that reduces the chances that the market will go down much further. Each of these red lines is other examples of that. Here's a bull reversal bar. The market had a strong bull trend bar here, uh, broke, it closed well above the highs of these bars. But the next bar, instead of uh, staying above the highs of these bars, quickly reversed down below the highs of those bars. So uh, the micro gap immediately closed. This trend bar basically is an exhaustion gap on the part of the bulls. It's a one bar bull trend. Okay, bull breakout, close above the high of the prior bar. But the next bar did not hold above the high of this bar. The micro gap closed and the market fell. Bear breakout. The, um, and here's the gap, the low of this bar, the high of this bar. We have a micro gap, but it closed and it became an exhaustion gap and the market went up instead of down. Here we have a trading range and a gap up. So we have a large gap. And a lot of times the middle of a gap leads to a measured move. So here's the start of the move. Here's the middle of the gap. And if you project up for the measured move, we eventually got there at bar number nine. Okay, we have the markets trading down to this point and then rallied and then broke below point two over here. Um, so potential measuring gap. And the high of this bar stayed below the um, low of that bar. This pullback stayed below the low of that bar. So, and then the market started to turn down again. 
So that left us with a gap below the low of this bar, above the high of this bar. The middle of that gap might be a, um, a source for a measured move projection. Here's the start of the move. Here's the middle of the gap. And traders will look to take profits at the bottom of the uh, measured move projection. Aggressive bulls might buy, especially given this um, strong bull bar. At this point, they would only be buying for a scalp. Here we go, a bear trend. The market broke out below point number two. It pulled back at four and six into a double top bear flag and started to, to, uh, to turn down. So that left us with a gap, this gray box. You can look at the middle of the gap and the start of the move to create a measured move projection down. And the market fell a little bit below it and then reversed up. So traders took profits here and we had pretty good buying pressure. And that tells you that um, probably bulls were buying as well. And that's um, what we can tell certainly from the, from the strong reversal up. So traders take profits at measured move targets. And you also have traders taking positions in the opposite direction. There are often many possibilities for measured move projections. Here we have a reversal up. Here we have a strong reversal up in the spider. So the market may go for a measured move projection based on the height of um, the sell-off. So traders will make a projection up and look to take profits in that area. We have a very strong bull spike and strong bull spikes usually lead to measured move projections. The, strength, the, the spike became very strong at the start of this bar so, and it continued up through this bar so traders will be looking to create measured move projections based upon that spike. Maybe from the open of the spike to the close of the third bar of the spike, maybe the bottom of the spike to the top of the spike, maybe from the bottom of the um, leg up to the top of the leg up. All of those projections come out uh, in the same general area. Whenever there's a confluence of resistance levels in the same area, it becomes more likely that the market will turn down uh, at that price level because different firms will use different projections and if a lot of firms all have projections in the same area, and they all start doing the same thing, taking profits or taking trades in the opposite direction, it increases the chances that the trend will reverse. And you can see that when we got up to this general price area, the bulls took profits and the bears uh, went short. On the way down, we're trending down, and then we had a breakout bar late in the trend. These, this is a breakout bar, and it turned out to be a two-bar reversal. So traders are wondering, is it the end of the move? Is it a sell climax? Or will the gap stay open and become a measuring gap? At this point, we had a pullback that tested the low. So, and then the market started to turn down again. So traders began to think that this might be a measuring gap for a measured move down, maybe based from the height of this leg, or maybe, from, maybe based on the height of the entire move down. Traders will look at both. The market sold off to this point and then turned up here, but look what happened. It did not close the gap, so that increases the chances that this is a measuring gap. We have a two-bar reversal on the test of the gap. Traders will also short below here. So they shorted below this bear bar after it turned down from after testing the breakout point, and they'll short again here below this two-bar reversal on the uh, test of the breakout point and the market reached the measured move projection at the end of the day. E-mini, we, we have a gap up, a very strong breakout. Here's the bottom of the gap, here's the top of the gap, and this is the middle of the gap, so look for a measured move up. And the market turned exactly at the middle of the gap. We have a bear leg that started here with this bear spike and a gap between the pullback and the breakout point, and uh, the market in this case went well below a measured move down. And that is the end of the module on measured moves and other types of support and resistance.